Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video based on everything that you need to know for complete and incomplete combustion and acid rain. Part 1 then, complete and incomplete combustion. Nice and simply, the difference between complete and incomplete combustion is complete combustion has lots of oxygen, incomplete combustion doesn't get enough. So if you have complete combustion, your fuel reacts with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water vapour. If you have incomplete combustion, similar thing happens, it reacts with oxygen, but because there's not enough oxygen, you get different things. You get carbon monoxide, CO. You get carbon or soot, which is C. You can still get carbon dioxide, and you always get water, H2O. Now, you'll usually be told this in an exam question, but they might turn around to you and say, what is produced by incomplete combustion? So carbon monoxide and soot are the key things. Now, you will be expected to write balanced equations for complete and incomplete combustion. So we're going to have a look at a complete one, which is asking for the complete combustion of ethane, C2H6. So it's giving you ethane in the actual question. So we know that's C2H6, I can put that in. And it's reacting with oxygen because it's complete combustion. And the second you see complete combustion, you put plus O2. Also, complete combustion tells you you have CO2 and H2O. That's the same for any complete combustion reaction. Then all you need to do is balance it. So you work out what you've got on either side. I've got two carbons, six hydrogens, and two oxygens on the left. One carbon, two hydrogens, and two plus one, which is three oxygens on the right. So what you need to do is choose something to balance. Now, I'm going to go with hydrogen because that's one of the easier things to look at at the moment. And I'm going to times it by three. So that's going to give me my six hydrogens, which makes it balanced. However, that also times my oxygen by three. So you can see this one here, that's times by three, giving me five oxygens on the right hand side. The next thing I'm going to look at is carbon. I've got two on the left and one on the right. So I put a two in front of my CO2. That gives me two carbons. So that's great. But again, it also doubles my oxygen. So I change that to a four, giving me seven in total. Now I've run into a bit of a problem. I need how many oxygens to get seven? 3.5. Now you can't put 3.5 in because it's not a whole number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double everything because that will put that up to seven. I had two CO2, so I'm going to make that four. And I had three H2O, so I'm going to make that six. And then I only had one C2H6, so I'm going to double that as well, so I'm going to put a two in front of that. So it will end up looking like two C2H6 plus seven O2 goes to four CO2 plus six H2O. Now it's always a good idea to check this afterwards. So let's have a look. I have two C2s, so that gives me four carbons on the left. 2 H6s, so that's 12 hydrogens, and 7 O2s, that's 14 oxygens. On the right, 4 times 1 is 4 carbons. I'll look at my hydrogens next. 6 times 2 is 12, and then let's move on to oxygen. In my CO2, I have 2 oxygens, I'm timesing that by 4, so that becomes 8. And then my H2O, I have 6 times 1, which is 6. I add my 8 and my 6 together, and I get 14, which means I'm balanced. If we have a look at an incomplete combustion example, so what is the balanced equation for the incomplete combustion of methane to produce carbon monoxide and water vapour? And it will tell you in the question that methane is CH4. So straight away, we put in CH4, it's combustion, so we're adding it to O2. And carbon monoxide, you just need to learn, is CO, and water vapour, you should know, H2O. So that's going to get you most of the marks in this question. Then all we need to do is balance it. So count up again. One carbon, four hydrogen, and two oxygen on the left. One carbon, two hydrogen, and one plus one equals two oxygens on the right. Again, choose something to balance. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go with my H's. So I'm going to times that by two to get my four. That also times my oxygen by two. So I have three oxygens on the right. So straight away, I'm running into a bit of an issue. But we can solve it. So a good idea is let's make our oxygens an even number. So that's my one over here. And I'm going to put a two in front of my carbon monoxide to make it even. So let's recount. That changes my carbons to two. And the oxygen from my carbon monoxide to two, giving me four oxygens on the right. I can then choose something that's not balanced on the left-hand side, so I'm going to go with my carbon. 
and I'm going to times that by two. So I need two because I've got two on the right, put a two in front of it, that gives me two carbons which is now balanced, but my hydrogen goes up to eight. Now you might be thinking, where do I go from here? Don't worry if you get to this situation, just keep working with it, keep playing around until you get it balanced. So I have eight hydrogens on the left, and because I've doubled my water, I only have four. So what can I times that by? Another two, so times it by two again. In other words, have four H2Os. Then recount. So four times two is eight hydrogens, so that's balanced. Four times by my one hydrogen is four. So therefore, I now have six oxygens on the right-hand side. So all I need to do is times my oxygen on the left by three, and it becomes balanced. Again, don't worry if you're struggling with this, have a look at my skill section on my website, it will help you out. So we've now talked about how you can write word equations and balanced equations for combustion. We now need to talk about the dangers of incomplete combustion. And there are two major ones, which are the products that are different to complete combustion, soot and carbon monoxide. If we start off with soot, that's the easy one, it blackens buildings so they don't look as nice, and it also can cause cancer, it's carcinogenic. The main thing you're going to be asked on though is carbon monoxide. And the key thing is that carbon monoxide is colourless, so you can't see it, it's odourless, so you can't smell it, and it's toxic, which means it's poisonous. And what you need to know is why. So if we have a look at some red blood cells, we breathe in normally, but if we breathe in carbon monoxide, by mistake, Carbon monoxide attaches itself to the red blood cells, and in particular, it binds with the hemoglobin. The hemoglobin is a red pigment found in blood. So it gets stuck in there. Now eventually, it'll get to the point where oxygen can't get in, or certainly there'll be less oxygen in the blood. If the oxygen can't get to the cells, respiration can't occur, and respiration is how we get our energy. So our cells are going to have less energy, and if they have less energy, that can lead to headaches, tiredness, and eventually it can lead to death. Right, the next section of this video is going to focus on acid rain, how it forms and the effects of it. So if we take any fossil fuel and heat it, a lot of our fossil fuels have an impurity, which is called sulphur. An impurity is something that shouldn't be there, something that we don't want to be there. And because we're heating that as well, it will react with the oxygen in the air and form something called sulfur dioxide, SO2. That sulfur dioxide will then rise up and it will move into our clouds. And when it dissolves in the water, it forms something called sulfurous acid. So you get a simple equation of SO2 plus H2O goes to H2SO3. That H2SO3 being sulfurous acid. That sulfurous acid then reacts with the oxygen again and it turns into sulfuric acid. So H2SO3 plus O2 becomes H2SO4. And that H2SO4, that sulfuric acid, is our acid rain. So why is that a bad thing? So you need to remember a few different things. It acidifies our soil, it acidifies lakes or water, and it weathers statues and corrodes metal. If we go into a bit more detail on that, when it acidifies the soil, it means the plants can't grow, they can't get the nutrients, they can't photosynthesize, so they stop growing. If it acidifies the water, the pH goes too low, so animals and plants can die from it. When it weathers your statues, it's particularly your limestone statues, calcium carbonate, and when it corrodes metals, in particular your iron. And it's not just sulfur that can cause acid rain, it's also nitrogen. Nitrogen which makes up 78% of our air. So in our car exhausts, if they get too hot, the nitrogen, N2, can react with oxygen in the air which is O2, and it will form various nitrous oxides. So for example, NO2, N2O5, and so on. Now these nitrous oxides go up into the air again, and they can form acid rain. And this time it's HNO3, nitric acid. These have exactly the same effect that we just talked about on your statues, on your soil, on your water. There are other problems though. NO2 can cause breathing problems such as bronchitis. They can also cause smog in the air. So what we have to do to make sure that it's safe is we have to use catalytic converters. 
Catalytic converters go into our car, we've talked about them in a previous video, and they take those nitrous oxides and they turn them back into nitrogen. The next section is going to have a look at using hydrogen as a fuel. Now the best way to do that is to have a look at the word equation, which is hydrogen H2 plus oxygen O2 goes to water H2O. Now the massive benefit of using hydrogen as a fuel is it only produces water vapour, which means we don't get CO2 like we do with combustion of most fuels. CO2 is a greenhouse gas and we'll talk about why that's a bad thing in a little while. So if we go back to hydrogen, it's flammable. That's a good thing because it produces energy, it gives out lots of energy. However, it also means that it needs to be stored. It's a gas, so it's hard to store. We need to have lots and lots of pressure to be able to store it, and that takes money. So that's one of your major disadvantages for using it as a fuel. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.